and last night I illustrated a couple things. I illustrated how leaven uh, can be illustrated in a couple ways. The text specifically says, and I'll, I'll just read the text, I'll just do a quick, quick review and then we'll move on with the evening. The text was Matthew chapter 13, verse 33. Another parable spoke them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which is yeast which a woman took and hid, mixed in the three measures of the meal, that flour, until it was leavened, the dough. It transformed, and I pray that last night will lead into tonight and you will be transformed. I have a quick little, uh, it's actually a blessing, and for some of you that have come on Wednesdays and you that are visitors, once, this is what I've been praying for because our daughter, and of course my wife has two, two children and I have two children, but her kids are my kids and my kids are her kids, so that's the way we do things in our house and that's how we roll in our home. But anyway, this is the little blessing that we've been praying for because it was a problematic pregnancy and there was a, it was a, the, they had actually moved up her uh, uh, surgery to take this little blessing a whole month in it, uh, ahead, or not till the 21st, they moved it back to the 9th. So we were in Abilene, Texas, and Sophia Lynn Preston was born, and mom and dad wanted me to thank you all for the prayers, because she didn't come out premature, she didn't come out with no problems, she's just perfect. She's just a perfect little baby. So I, I didn't get to show you that last night, but I have it for this evening. And anyway, Last night we talked about leaven and how I illustrated it, how it gets into our hearts. It could be positive and it could be negative. And of course you always want positive things because the character of God comes in us when positive things come into our hearts, correct? And of course the fruits of the Spirit come out and people see that and that's how we bring more people to the fold by showing them our love and how we are more Christ-like as opposed to the negative things that show people that there's ugliness in us and that's the part that we don't want to show. We want leaven. We want that yeast to work and transform our heart, obviously our minds, for positive things and not negative things. Tonight though, we're going to be talking about the vine and the branches. The vine and the branch. The text that I'll be reading is, if you have your Bibles, if you'll open up your Bibles to John chapter 15, verse 5. John chapter, even though it's going to be on the screen, work with your Bibles. And if there's somebody new here this evening, somebody that is knowledgeable of the Bible, sit next to that person if they need assistance. We're looking for John. We're in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, and John, Gospels. And the Bible tells us right here, it says, I am the vine. And ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. That's John chapter 15, verse 5. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. And we'll start out with, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. And our first point that we want to cover here is our Lord's discourse on the true vine was spoken immediately after the Lord's Supper. And we know in John chapter 13, verse 1, if you want to turn your Bibles there, John chapter 13, verse 1, Christ is talking about something. Jesus knew. Jesus knew that his hour had come. Christ had lived his life preaching those last three years, and now he knew. He knew that his hour had come. The last words of the preceding chapter, which is uh, 13 verse 2, or 12 verse 2, or the, la the last verse, excuse me, the last verse, uh, preceding chapter, it says, Arise, let us hence, would seem to indicate that the disciples arose and left the table and left the upper room. If you look at John, and it, they had just finished communion. If you read the book of John, they had just finished the communion and Christ says arise let us go hence would seem to me indicate that it was time to go there is a connection and a relationship between our Lord's words before I go there let me back up one what it says 
what I also had to hear says, it has been suggested that the discourse or the dialogue that Christ was talking to the disciples about before they stood up and left, he was talking to them in this dialogue. He, he, it suggests, the Bible suggests in, cha in John chapter 18, verse 1, it suggests this. It says that about as Christ was walking with the disciples, the dialogue was taking place about the true vine was giving on the was getting ready to go into Gethsemane. In John chapter 18, verse 1, they're crossing over the brook Kidron to the garden. So as you can you can you can picture this now. Christ says, Arise, let's go. And in this dialogue, as he's communicating with them, he's talking to them about the vine, the true vine. They had just finished communion. And now they're crossing the Kidron to the garden, the Garden of Gethsemane. There is a connection and a relationship between the Lord's words. He says in John chapter 14, verse 6, open your Bibles. Look at your Bibles. John chapter 14, verse 6. Let's see what the Bible tells us. What is Christ trying to tell us here? Everybody have that? Amen? And the Bible tells us in John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the what? And the life. And his discourse or his dialogue on, I am the vine, he are the branches. He's telling us here in 14.6 that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And what we're talking about, and we're going to get a little, we'll, we'll get to understand the vine and the branches a little more on how those connect, how they tie together, that Jesus Christ is the, what does it say again there? Help me again. What is John? The truth, the way, and the life. Amen. It is noteworthy how our Lord lays hold on the simplest things, the things that are necessary to life and make them the emblem of himself. Let's note carefully. Let's note this carefully. Jesus Christ says in John 6, 48. Open your Bible. Let's see what the Lord tells us. We're going to be working out our Bibles this evening. Yeah, John chapter 6. We're going to be working out of John for a little while here. So be able to flip through those pages. John chapter 6, verse 48. And what does the Bible tell us there? We're all there. Amen. He says, I am the bread of what? Life. So we're starting to make this connection between the vine and the branches and what Christ said. Now, let's go to John chapter 8, verse 12. We're trying, to, we're making this connection. And Christ makes the simplest things, the things that are necessary to life and, and makes them the emblem of himself. And in John chapter 8, verse 12, what does it say? I am the light of the what? The world. The world. So now we know he is the bread of life. Are we talking about the, the physical bread or the word? What are we talking about? The bread of life is the word. We have to feed on that so we can feed ourselves spiritually. And it says, I am the light of the world. See, now if I read into that, the light of the world, if I'm reading it, what does that mean to me? It should mean it's giving us direction. You know what the beauty of the Bible is? It's a blueprint for us to... To, to carry our Christian lives because this whole Bible, it talks, it's nothing about Christ. And Christ wants us to feed on the Word. Amen? He wants to feed on it, that bread of life. And once we feed on it, then we'll have the light. We'll see which way to go. It's just, it's just a, it's directions. Like when you're driving and you hit the stop sign or, or the lights, you know to stop. It's the, the law, it's the rules on how we should apply ourselves as Christians. Amen? John chapter 14, verse 6. Let's look at another thing that's noteworthy, how our Lord lays hold on the simplest things. John chapter 14, verse 6. Did everybody have a great day? It was nice. It was relaxing and resting. And of course, we get to church and Satan wants to work us over, but you know what? He's not going to beat us tonight. Amen? That little rascal. So John chapter 14, verse 6, it says, I am the... We've already said this once, right? These are the simplest things. He is the way, giving us direction. He's the truth. If we follow what he says, we, we can't go wrong. And of course, he's the life. 
Now the true vine. Let's talk a little bit about the true vine. The true vine is using all these claims that we just discussed in those three chap in those three verses. He expresses his claims to be absolutely indispensable to the world and vital to the life of man. That's what the vine is all about. We have to stay connected. You have to stay connected to the power. If you don't stay connected to the power, you will die. Dude, if you don't pay your bill, your electricity bill, what happens? The lights go out, right? If you don't bring food to the table physically, you won't stay strong for very long. And after a while, you'll fall on the wayside. There's so many ways that we need to understand that using what we just, in the note, knowing carefully the, those three verses that we heard, now we're talking about the true vine. He said, he, um, and he to the Jews, said he to the Jews, he that eateth my flesh. Let's go to John chapter 6, verse 56. John chapter 6, verse 56. And in the book of John, in this particular paragraph that I was reading in that area of 56, what happened is the Jews had rejected their own. Could you imagine little Sophia coming into this world and we reject her? That's not how we should do things. Christ came in this world and the Jews were blind to this whole. The, the Pharisees, they had the scrolls, they had all they needed. All they had to do is, is follow the way, the truth, and the life. And they had it. But they failed to realize it. It was right in front of them. John chapter 6 verse 56 says, He to the Jews, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Is this literal or is this... What is this? Is this spiritual? Is this literal? Do we eat flesh? When we come to communion or if you've ever had communion, do you eat Christ's body? No, oh, it's symbolic, right? When you take of his blood, it's symbolic. So this verse is telling us that we should never forget. He tells us in the Bible to remember, right? To commune with him, to not forget what has happened, that he died on the cross and he bled on the cross for us. We need to keep that in mind. John 6, 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. For without me, and let's go to John 15, 5. Look at your Bible, John 15, 5. We're still talking about the true vine, and we're still trying to apply it to it's noteworthy how our Lord holds on to the simplest things. He always, he always describes things in a simple, in simple terms. He doesn't try to get so technical to where people cannot relate and can't not, cannot understand at whatever level you're at in society, or whatever race, color, creed you are, or whatever, whatever you, you are in your life. He wants to explain that to you in the simplest terms. For without me, it says in John 15, 5, for without me, you can do everything. Is that what it says? What does it say there? Does it say everything? John 15, uh, John chapter 15, verse 5. I hope I'm in the right place. For without me, he can do what? Nothing. Not a, not a single thing. So you've got to stay connected. If you don't stay connected to the source, and that's the, the grapes on the vine. If the grapes fall off, what happens to the grapes? They go bad. If you don't use them, they ferment. They dry up, and the raisins, and then, and then they just turn to dust. But as long as they stay connected to the vine, there's life. Let's look at the, let's go a little deeper. It must be noted that no other man ever made such sweeping, what? Sweeping claims. We're talking about Jesus Christ here. We're talking about the vine, and we are the branches. It must be noted that no other man has ever made such a sweeping claim. John 1.23, if you'll turn your Bibles to John 1.23. We're talking about a person here. John chapter 1, verse 23. John the Baptist said right there in 123, I am a voice crying in the wilderness. 
What was he crying about? Was he crying because he was hungry? Was he crying because he was lacking in something? John the Baptist was born for a reason. He was sent to bear witness of the light to come. Who is the light? Jesus Christ, right? John, at one point, people, he had followers. People thought he was the Messiah at that point. He says, no. There is, I am the lesser light. There is one that is, that is brighter than me. There is a light stronger than me that is coming. He was referring. His job was to tell people and prophesy. And that's what we're here today. The Great Commission is to tell people about Christ soon coming. And how, and right now, how we should be connected to Christ. If you're not connected to Christ, you're connected to the world. It's the wrong light. The world is what we were talking about yesterday, the leaven. If you apply more of the world to your heart and less of Christ to your heart, then of course whatever comes out, whatever transforms, whatever grows, is not what Christ wants. It's exactly what Satan wants. And we're dealing with two lights. Anytime you deal with Christ, you're dealing with a parallel. There's always, whatever Christ throws at us, Satan throws at us with, this, with the opposite. And in this case, we're talking about the light that John was witnessing that was coming in John 1.8. John 1.8 was talking about the witness of this light to come. And he was talking about Jesus Christ. Others pointed, others pointed forward to the Messiah for to come. We know that prophets and uh, people in biblical times were always professing as we should profess now that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Just have to turn on your TV or you just have to look out there and you'll see things are coming more rapidly. You know, it tells us in the Bible how pe the, the, the knowledge of men will increase and then they'll be in diverse places, terrible things happening. Uh, when you go to other countries where they don't allow you to worship at your choice. Can you imagine one day coming to the church and you can't even get in the church because there's a chain, it's been chained and locked. But at that point in time, if you are connected to the vine, if you're connected to the source, your light will not go out. And that's the light that Jesus Christ is telling us that we need. So let the light shine on others. The music, don't you love the praise team? A amen for the praise team, right? Satan was working overtime tonight, but the praise team was still able to produce and to provide that beautiful thing. If they met, I, you would not want me up here singing. That would not be a good thing. <laughs> and I am matching in socks tonight, I want you to know. I told everybody last night, the hardest thing I was going to have to deal with this week was just dressing myself. But just like I said, the, the beautiful wife that I have and the understanding, she has my meals. I think she even has them dated. Eat this one today. Take it out at this time. She's awesome. He's awesome. Let me get back on track here. I'm sorry. So we were talking about, it must be noted that no other man ever made such sweeping claims. But the Son of God identifies all messianic predictions with his person. In other words, anything that had anything to do in the Bible and Scripture that talked about the awaited Redeemer, this has been professed years, hundreds of years before Christ came by prophets, that he was coming. And John was that final one that was telling everybody, he's coming, he's coming. And what do we, we were, the world was asleep when Christ came. But now that you were made it, there's a reason why you're here tonight. There's a reason why you're here tonight. And that is so you can get connected. If you have not been connected, now is the time to be connected. Amen? You have to stay connected to the source. Now believe me, just like I said in the beginning, there's a parallel to everything in life. If you, if you gravitate closer to the world, then you become more like the world. Sometimes, you know, it tells, you, it tells us in the Bible that Christ does not want us to be lukewarm. Because lukewarm means you're in both places. You're, you're a little bit over here in the world because you're partial, sympathetic to worldly things. And then there's that other part where you're warm and you're more partial closer to Christ, but Christ says He doesn't want us to be cold and warm, lukewarm. He wants us to be cold or hot so He can mold us and transform us and use us. So that's something that we have to think about. Amen. Now, the, 
The claims of our Lord to be the true vine is indicative. What is indicative to? Let's look at John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Let me open up my Bible real quick. The best time I find to read my Bible is in the morning. I don't know when your best time is. Even when I was going to school, I always had a time of the day that was, it just, I knew that I was able to observe, uh, uh, you know, absorb more and understand more. My best time is when everything's quiet in the morning and I get up in the morning and I read the word and stuff because I'm able to understand it better. And I'm able to, because if you wait till the end of the day, you, you, you've dealt with all the worldly things and, and then you come home and then someone's tugging at your leg or you gotta go walk the dog or whatever you do in life. We all have so many things. We have, we have family members that we care for, but you know, in the evening you're just so tired and, and you have a hard time opening up the word. But we want to look at John, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. See what I have here. Yeah, John chapter one. And John chapter one, verses one and three tells us here. It says, "In the beginning was the Word. What was in the beginning? The Word. And Christ, God, the Lord Jesus, Yahweh. They're all he, he's described with many different words, but here is the Word. And the Word was with." God and the word was what? God. He was in verse 2. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him and without him nothing made that was made. The Bible tells us here that he is our what? Our creator, right? That's what these verses are telling us. In the beginning, if we don't have a beginning, if we don't have a God, if we don't have Christ, we won't exist. If you take Christ out of the equation, what happens to us? We become nothing. Evolutionists are trying their best to contradict what the beginning was. Creation versus evolution. It's being fought in schools and colleges. They, they want to force evolution to, but see, the beauty of Christ is that he's created things for us. Science. In so many ways, science has proven that evolution could not have existed. Everything that's thrown, because people are connected, they, they force the issue and they push the issue. When you stay connected, you can always counteract what Satan is throwing at us. And evolution is one of the things he wants to throw at us. We want to talk about creation. The claims of our Lord to be the true vine is indicative that he is the creator. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 34. What does that tell us? Jeremiah. We're in the Old Testament now. So I'll give everybody a few seconds. And we're going to chapter 50. What does this tell us about the Lord being the true vine? Chapter 50, uh, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 34. And in the Bible tells us that he is who? Their who? If you're not there, some of you may not be there. Their redeemer is strong. Here, here we're talking about, uh, if, if you know the book, this particular chapter is talking about the Lord spoke against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans. Through the prophet Jeremiah is what's going on here. And Jeremiah is telling everybody there, or this is the Babylonians, the Chaldeans. They're saying there, their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He will thoroughly plead their case that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. So now we know that the Lord, being the true vine, he is the who? The Redeemer. Christ is the Redeemer. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. And we'll, one more point here. Let's get to Hebrews. All right. You know, I've been really fighting to put tabs on my Bible. I've been fighting that so hard. Because, you know, when, when the lights go out, and I'm talking about.
about the doors get locked and we are not able to worship, I want to be able to flip to the pages. And when they take my Bible away, I want to be able to memorize. You know what? Back in the days, the Pharisees and uh, Jews, they, they memorized texts. Do you have a favorite text? And if you don't have a favorite text, memorize one. Learn a text. And then before you know it, you want to learn two texts. And then maybe, you know what? I want to learn a text for every day. I want to learn a text for every month. I want to, before you know it, you'll be, you'll be an expert. You'll be like Doug Bachelor, one of these great evangelists out there that just spit out the texts and stuff. I do a lot of quoting, but sometimes I, I can't remember the text. I'm getting better at it, though. That's what we need to do. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses um, 1 and um, from page, chapter 1, Verses 1 to 3, and, and God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the worlds. Did you hear that? He made the worlds with His hands. In verse 3 it says, who being the brightness of His glory and the express image of his person and the upholding of all things by word of his power when he had by himself did you hear that by himself purged out sins sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high i want to sit at the you know i'll sit in any little corner in heaven but just give me an opportunity to be there and, and it's our choice isn't that awesome how christ gives us the choice he gives us the choice to connect ourselves to the vine he doesn't force you to connect yourself to the vine. He wants you to connect with your own free will. Isn't that the beauty? That, you know, we are the only creation in the universe that has had free will like this. Angels were created differently than us. Angels have never experienced sin. That's why we have experienced sin. Adam and Eve were connected. Christ walked with them in the Garden of Eden. Imagine that. Imagine when we get to heaven, you'll be able to go talk to Adam and Eve. What were those conversations like? How was that connection? Did you feel it? Do you feel it tonight? And if you don't feel that connection yet, you're still fighting. And that's what happens with people. We have a tendency of fighting and re resisting. Why is it so hard to accept the truth? He's just trying to give us a little bit of his, of his love. And that's the problem sometimes. We, we fail to want to stay connected and feel that love. So, now as you can see, I was mentioning earlier, should He, and I'm talking about Christ, God, the Holy Spirit, if they were to withdraw the hand from creation, life would cease to exist. Because it tells us right here, the beauty of the Bible is it tells us, it opens it up for us and it tells us that His own hands created this world. Amen? this world important for us is our spiritual relationship to Christ and its effects let's keep reading here how are you guys doing this evening Amen. doing well doing good with time important for us is our spiritual relationship to Christ and its effects what I'm talking about is that connection that you make what are you going to do with it how are you going to what's the effects are you just going to be a person that comes to church or, or goes to work? Because you can apply the light in many different ways in your, in your homes. Because that's where Christ, that's where Christ should be, amen? It should be the connection, the source should be in your homes. It should be the center of your home. The first thing you do is thank God for giving me another breath of life today, Father. We have people that are sick. We have people that are in pain. We have people, but you know, I always think about this. There, I, in the lowest, lowest part of my life, I, I can remember leaving Georgia in the rearview mirror. I was, I was having to leave because things were not working out at home. And of course, I was at my lowest point. And where did I have to go? I went back to family. And my family is Christ. And my family is my immediate family, my wife and my children and my relatives and my friends. You have to get connected. 
right? And they're going to see something different. And we're going to talk about the fruits of the Spirit in a little bit. Because if you don't have the fruit of the Spirit, you're missing out a blessing from Christ. Because the fruits that you're showing others are the worldly fruits and the fruits that don't amount to nothing. Regardless, I don't care how hard you work in life. I don't care how much money you save. Look at your 401ks if you have a 401k. Look at the stock market. Did you ever think that a stock market would just fall, the bottom would fall out, and people's savings, people are saving money the next day for tomorrow. There may not be tomorrow. And because there's no tomorrow, we just hope and pray that your, your family members and those that you know and that you're around, that you get connected with them and show them a light. Because guess what? Shame on you if you don't talk to them about Jesus Christ. And we need to share our belief. We need to share with others. If you're here for the first time or second time and you have never heard some of these parables that Jesus, these divine messages that he's providing us, these are little short messages that are made for the common person to understand. So you can spread them to those. Text people tomorrow. Call people and say, you know what, I heard something different. Because I'll tell people down the road, you're going to hear other uh, types of uh, gospel and some of, the, some of the preaching that goes on. It's shame on them because you know what, the Bible tells us there'll be gashing of teeth in the end. You know why? Because we were led wrong by our, by our pastors and preachers and they, I, but, but pastor told me, but you didn't go look for yourself. You need to get connected and the way you get connected is into the word and the word is reading it and understanding it. Amen? Important for us. I am the vine and ye are the branches. This relationship shows that true life apart from Jesus Christ is impossible and hopeless. Do you hear me? It's hopeless. You may think you have it together. I'll tell you, before this week, I didn't have it together. And I told my church, I was honest. I'm scared. You know why I was scared? Because I was losing that connection. I got connected again because brothers and sisters uplifted me. You need to be uplifted sometimes. I was listening on the radio a little earlier about people getting angry and upset all the time. Do you know what? Because they're not connected. They're not showing the fruits of the Spirit. Because we should be able to deal with things differently as Christians. And those that have the fruit of the Spirit, we should deal with things differently. For with, I continue to say, uh, John writes uh, in John chapter 1 verse 4, if you'll turn your Bibles, John chapter 1 verse 4. Man, keep coming each evening. And each evening we're going to have more blessings here. And you know what? If I don't have all the answers, you ask me and write them down. And I, I will find the answers for you. Let the pastor know. Matter of fact, I owe Naomi. Oh, yes, Naomi. Naomi texted me a couple of days ago. And she, I think she's, uh, she's saying, oh, oh, Brother Martin's slipping again. He's slipping. But I, I, trust me, I will get her an answer. She called me when I was on the road, and then when I got home, I was just focused on trying to get ready for, for the crusade and stuff, So, but I owe her an answer. So if you have a question and I can't answer it, or, or something comes into your mind, write it down on a piece of paper and give it to uh, us as, we, as you depart this evening. So we're looking at right now at the Bible, and we're looking at John chapter 1, verse 4, and it tells us in the Bible, In Him was life, and the life was the light of who? Man, you, me, all of us, it was the light of us. Amen. This is true physically and spiritually, for there is no light or life outside of Him. Do you hear me? You may be struggling in life, but that's okay. You know, Christ, you can't throw it. Whatever you throw at me, Christ, I can handle it. I can deal with it. Because the, the harder you ground yourself, the harder you get connected to the vine. And the vine is God, Christ. The, 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 the stronger the, the connection, nothing can take you down. Amen. Amen. You, while I was sitting right, standing right there, I was just praying, saying, you don't have nothing on us. <laughs> he doesn't. E, talking about you, talking about me. You or me are the branches. We are the branches. 
The branches are utterly dependent on the vine. If they are severed from the vine, they wither and die. Do you follow me? You go to the garden and pick a tomato, and leave it there on the side. What happens to it? Sorry. It dries, it dies. We're talking about grapes here in this case. Same thing, it dies. For without me, ye can do nothing. Notice, notice, notice. The Lord does not say that without him, our work will be inferior. Inferior meaning poor work in rank, degree, or grade. No, without me, you can do what? Nothing. You may live life, marry, or wake up in the morning breathing. Oh, I didn't need anything. I, my, my daughter's, uh, my son's mother came, my, my daughter's mother-in-law. They came and they invited me to go eat at Denny's. And I thought that, that was a good opportunity for me. But you know what, we have to be careful too. When we're talking to people, there's always that right moment. And my moment was when they brought the food and everybody was ready to dig in. And guess what? My grandson. He says, aren't we going to pray, Grandpa? Oh, yes, amen. I said, yes, it's good to pray for our food. You don't. And I told him, you know, God wants us to bless the food before we take it and let it bless our, bless us, right? nourish our bodies. My grandson's six and he's slowly starting to get the gist of it. He's starting to get connected. Oh, no, it's, this is not just, the connection is not just for adults. It's not just for people that are in pain and hurting and dealing with it. It's for everybody. you got to get connected, even as little ones. Because the Bible tells us if you teach the little ones, when they grow up, they will not forget. Our parents, in 1969, accepted the word, received the leaven, transformed. And that was awesome. But... From little, we were, I like ducks in a row. If, you're, if you were out of line, you just get a little pinch right there and just listen to that teacher. I remember those days. Do you guys, any of you remember the Torres? I know there's some visitors here. Some of you, the Torres family, they was beautiful people, man. They really got me connected. That's what I'll never forget. And you never forget the relationships, those connections you make in the church. You never forget those. Amen. They are the branches. This shows that our spiritual life depends upon our living connection with the vine. And that living vine is who? Because we don't, we don't serve... We don't serve a dead God. Amen. Isn't that awesome? He resurrected. Just like it says in the Bible on the third day. He says, I will come out of that tomb. He defeated Satan on the cross. So we don't have a battle with him. Our only battle right now is the decisions that we make and that connection we make. That's the battle we have right now. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is that connection. Ah, I love this part right here. How many of you have rose gardens? I, I can spend hours out there. My wife has to go check on me. Make sure. I love pruning my roses. I love cutting those things. Because guess what? Because the Bible also tells us the pruning and the severing. If we, if something, if, if you plant a vine with grapes and it doesn't produce on this branch, what usually do you do? don't want to be cut off in the sense once you receive the word and then you reject it. You're cutting yourself off from the vine, the source. But when I, when I prune my roses, it, it never fails. With, if I give it water, and Christ talks about water too, not the kind of water we drink, but the water of, of the word that we take, it, it'll give us everlasting life. We, we don't once you start drinking it, you never have to worry about it. It's forever. But water on this earth, if we take it, 
and stop. It won't take very long. Food, you can live a while for, but water, you can't. You will die on the vine if you don't take water. So I, I give my plants, my, I give my roses uh, food, and, and I give it the type of food I'm talking about here, too, also the spiritual food. I pray for my roses and stuff, and when I prune them, they just come out so beautiful. It's awesome. And that's exactly what Christ wants to do. So all that bad stuff that we have on us, you know, it's the same thing in the church. It's the same thing in your homes. When things aren't right, you have to, you have to have that come to Jesus talk with your children sometime. Bring them back. Do you hear me, church? You have to bring them back. If you don't bring them back, they'll fall by the wayside. Then before you know it, you'll be like my mother on her knees, praying for her kids to bring them back to the fold, to make that connection again. It took me a long time, and I should just be raked over the coals for my ignorance. Because I felt the world was more important. The alcohol, the drugs, the other filthy things that were in my life. In 1989, I'll give you my testimony, I was walking down the street. My family was still here in the United States and I was there. I was staying in a guest house, hotel. And I was eating, and I had just finished eating, I was coming down the road and it's dark on the left side. This is, the, this is exactly that connection I'm telling you about. The connection, the bad connection was on the other side of the street. It was a guest house, a bar. It was flashing. I'm debating, what am I going to do? But my worldly self, I look to the left, and that's exactly what Christ does with us. He gives us the choice. I look to the left and right, and my carnal self, I went to the right. I walked into the guest house full of German soldiers, and I'll tell you, German soldiers and just Germans in general are the most friendliest, loving, most drinkiness people that I've ever met in my life. I fought around for them all and that was it. I woke up two and a half days later in the hotel room, naked and half dead. The lady that came in and woke me tells the guests how we probably need to call somebody. But that moment when I woke up I told Christ, I, will, I need you, Father. I cannot do this. I was an alcoholic. I was dead. I was left for dead. But Christ gave me another chance. He says, Brother Mark, come here. Get connected again. He gave me another opportunity to connect. The pruning and the severing. We have here a positive affirmation. <coughs> An affirmation that God designs that our relationship with Jesus Christ is to bear fruit, to bring forth results for the kingdom of God. He wants us, once you're connected to the vine, and, and then your, your uh, fruits of the Spirit and your character changes, and people see a difference in you, and you don't have the fear of inviting somebody or say, come over here to the crusade and listen to some different stuff. This is, I've never heard this before. Come to church, listen to this. He wants us to bear fruit, and he'll know us by what we bear. The types of fruit that we bring back. If I have my branches, and I'm not bringing people to the church, Christ is going to cut me off. He'll be destroyed. And that's what pains me, because I have been given the opportunity tonight to tell a few that may have never heard this that you have an opportunity. You still have a chance. We all have a chance and Christ is not the type of Christ that doesn't matter what you've done in life, you can be forgiven. Amen? He says, come back. Come back to the fold and get connected. I am the life, he says. We have a positive formation. We are to influence men to accept the plan of salvation, not coerce or to force people, but to give them the opportunity. And that's what I do tonight. I'm going to plant the seed. You're going to plant the seed, the seed of that vine. It's going to grow and you'll stay connected to it. 
This is then, this then is the vital lesson of the true vine and its branches to bring forth fruit. Galatians chapter 5, we won't go there, but write this down. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 talks about the fruits of the Spirit. And for us to bring forth fruit, we must have and keep a living connection with the source of fruit bearing, Jesus Christ our Lord. Did you hear me? Also, God designs that our fruit remain. And in closing, I forgot to say that in closing, so get the praise team going here. And in closing, I also, God designs that our fruit remain. Do you hear what I'm saying? Once you get connected and you start bearing fruit, that it remain. Well, we can apply that to many different things, but tonight we're going to apply it to souls, to people that don't nothing about Christ, and that you talk to them about it. You tell them about the true vine, and that you are the branch, and you show them the fruits of the Spirit, and you show them the change in your character. And you do it in a loving way and you bring them to the fold. That means that he wants to see the results of our labors to show up in the world to come. You know, this is just a temporary world, guys. I don't know if you know that or not. The Bible tells us that there's going to be a new Jerusalem. There's going to be a new beginning. A place where there's no pain. You don't have to do a lot of gaining because you're just going to have Christ is going to make you perfect. Those that can't walk will walk. Those that can't see will see. Those that can't hear will hear. Because they stay connected. I want to be there. And I hope you want to do the same. Amen.